Dragon And there's the king There's a girl He got a dragon egg And he's also an asshole I would urge that you not allow this triarchy much latitude in the steps of progress. If our shipping lanes fall, it will beg our force. The Crown has heard your reports from all this and takes time to pass it. Oh, I ain't even talking to you. Well, shall we discuss the Air's tournament, Your Grace? I would be delighted. Man, they gonna make me jump out my character. King Viserys Targaryen, first of his name, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, and ruler of the Andals and the First Men. Um, king Viserys is a horrible king, and I'm going to outline today why, some of my reasons of why I believe King Viserys is one of the worst kings to sit the Iron Throne. Now, the scene we just saw, right, in the beginning, in the very beginning, the scene we just saw was the first council meeting we see. And in this scene, you see them talking about nonsense. Uh, Lord Beesbury is complaining about the money being spent on the city watch because now he's the master of coin, even though Damon was the former master of coin. Now they switched it out and put this guy who has all of his money invested into the kingdom. He, uh, Lord Beesbury is apparently giving or loaning money to the crown, similar to what we see in Game of Thrones with the Lannisters, loaning gold to uh, the Baratheon crown. Um, so, we see this, we see them talking about no monetary problems and blah, blah, blah. The economy is important. But then, Lord Corliss, Lord Corliss speaks up and says, hey, you know, there's some stuff going on. Step stones. I think we should uh, focus on that. And no one's, no one's paying any mind. Um, it's funny and it's interesting the way Otto looks at Lord Beesbury when he brings up Damon. It's almost as if Otto had planted that that thought into Lord Beesbury's mind, and he was watching it bear fruit right before him and he smirked. This is Otto in his most arrogance, the first episode. First episode you see all of the intrigue, all of the 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 conniving glances and, and just little subtle hints that Otto is really running the show. And the look that Corliss gives Otto and then the king, like, you just gonna let him speak for you? The hand of the king is not supposed to speak for the king, unless the king commands it, you know, but it's not like the king isn't present, the king is sitting right there, and still, he, this man is telling you, hey, there's this new alliance, this triarchy from the free cities that aren't under our sway, and they're trying to come into our area of influence, and it could cause uh, our ships to be intercepted and all this stuff and it will affect our economy they can bring war on the step stones and this fool just lets Otto shut him down the series literally allows Otto to shut down the conversation about something real something that needs to be taken care of and instantly jumps to oh yeah let's let's talk about the tournament yes lord jesus yes save me from actually doing some work so Let's just look at the scene between Corliss and Sirius. My lords, the growing alliance among the three cities has taken to starting itself, the trial. I have left on Glasso, and are presently reading the stepstones of his pirate infestation. Well, that sounds suspiciously like the news book. A man called Clarkus Prehar described himself the Prince Admiral of this trial. We call him the Crab Fever, due to his inventive methods of punishing his enemies. And are we meant to meet for dead pirates? No, you grace. Nero, you're late. King Scott must not be late. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. That nigga's tripping. Yes, Russell. These niggas is tripping. <laughs> what, is, what is going on? He, this man, 
Corliss just brought up a good point. Hey, this man, he's freeing the Stepstones from the Pirates, which sounds cool, but now he's like the chief admiral, and he's saying that like he's going to be lord of this area, which no one can say because that's treason because we all, you know, we've all sworn fealty to you, except for the freehold cities. So... Maybe we should handle this. And maybe we should get rid of the pirates instead of letting this guy, this random dude, do it. And no, as soon as Rhaenyra walks in, ah, ah, oh yeah, my, my, my wine, my cupbearer, you're so important. And it's like, bruh, why are you worried about wine? It's like 10 in the morning. We're talking about the security of the realm and you blubbering over your daughter and being late for wine. What? And then, this is another thing that he is a horrible parent. He allows Rhaenyra to do whatever she wants. She lies directly to his face for no reason. She's a habitual liar. We'll get to Rhaenyra in another video, but she is just a habitual liar for no reason. Like, it's ridiculous. He just allows that to slide. He knows she's lying. And And he just, he doesn't reprimand her for it. He, that, that tells you a lot about his character. The series is a people pleaser. The series is, oh, let's have a party, let's have a good time, let's drink. You know what I'm saying? The series is, the series is that guy that uh, he, he he tries too hard to be liked. Those people are very dangerous because those people will do almost anything for a little bit of. A little bit of shine, a little bit like he wants to be remembered as his great king, and yet he doesn't even want to do the work to be the king. He doesn't want to hear the council. He doesn't want to deal with real problems. He just wants to throw tournaments and fulfill this dream he had. And I'll get into a whole nother thing about the dreams because I believe that prophecy for the series was planted in his mind. Long before he became one of the trees, Brendan used his gifts of skin change and green sight and other magics like glamours to always stay two steps ahead of his opponents. His the mild-mannered master whispers using the same tricks Blood Raven would later use. Does he have his own powers of skin changing and green sight that Laris uses to run circles around his muggle opponents in the great game? I do not believe that he saw the future. I believe that there's an outside force in Westeros, probably in the far north, who sends fake dreams to people. I just believe that. I believe that one of some green seer is sending false prophecies and has been sending false prophecies for a long time. I do not believe. Um, and it could be that the series is misreading the prophecy, which we've seen in the books. Everyone misreads the prophecies. Everyone. Everyone misreads. But um, I don't know. I, I think that the series whole prophecy isn't even about the prophecy isn't about his direct line the prophecy is of course about Daenerys and and um, and Jon Snow but he is so obsessed with the prophecy that he's not focusing on what's real he's not focusing on his wife who you can clearly see is not well he's not focusing on the things that are not good in the realm. Um, For example, when his brother comes back and does the, oh, he just butchered people in the city. It was like, bro, the city is lawless. He had to go to the extreme to restore order, and that's what he did. But, and that's the one time that you see the series take counsel from someone other than Otto. Which is, of course, why Otto wants to keep him away. And how does Viserys not see this? How does he not see the manipulation? Um, The fact that Otto speaks for him when he's literally being spoken to, that is disrespectful. And that Viserys doesn't know. He's he's my friend. It's like, no, my friends don't speak for me. Uh, I've never seen this. So he is a horrible ruler for that. Now, let's get on to the next reason why he is a horrible ruler. He is a horrible ruler because he is the one that divided the bloodlines. 
he did not do what his grandfather did. His grandfather bore two sons, two or three sons or something. No, maybe it was more than that. Maybe it was like 13. I think it was like 13 kids they had. Most of them passed or something. And, or maybe I'm thinking of someone else. You know what? Whatever. Anyway, I know that Jahari's, uh, had multiple children and after his wife died he didn't remarry why because he was intelligent see the problem with Viserys is he's trying to play like he's his grandfather he's trying to play like the conciliator when really he's just the appeaser he appeases everyone he he he's just there to oh well, I the lords to like me and I want the ladies to like me. I want everybody to be happy and have fun. That's not how the world works, bro. It's not how the world works. With as much sunshine as we get, we get the rain. With, with as much life as born on this planet, it leaves that very same day. It's taken away. It's unalive because that's just the circle of life. That's, that's the way it is. And to only want to see the good, to only want to see the good in people, to only want to see the good in your job and not step back and see the reality of what's going on makes you a fool. It makes you a fool open to all these types of different devices that Otto is employing around him. And he can't even see it. And it's blatant. The looks that Otto gives to the maester when they're discussing um, his marriage and stuff. Like, certain things are just out there in, in his face and he does nothing about it and that's why his family is splintered he allowed a snake Otto to pimp his daughter on him he ends up being a fool instead of marrying for duty like he should have and uniting the bloodlines of the of old Valeria he, why wouldn't you do that? What what would oh no, she's too young. You could have waited. Your wife just died. You could have just waited. Wait for her to turn 14, 15, whatever the age of consent was back then, then marry her. Or you could have married her when she was twelve and not touched her for three, four, or five years. But then I the way that everything's going, I bet she would have ended up with some type of accident or something. Something would have happened that would have caused some type of rift because the, there's too many coincidences about things that have been going on. The death of Viserys' father, uh, the deaths of his aunts and uncles, the, the all that stuff like happened in succession right after the other, almost as if it was planned. Almost as if they were trying to create this contention over who should be on the throne. This had already happened to the Targaryens before this with May with, with uh, Mag Magor and uh, Magor killing um, his nephew and all that and seizing the throne. This had already happened. So they knew that they could create this scenario again. What they didn't foresee was someone like Damon who wasn't going to play that game? Who wasn't going to feed into? Yeah, you should see. Damon doesn't want the power. Damon doesn't care about being king. Damon just wants things to function properly. Same with Corlys, as you can see in this scene, which is why they ended up uniting. And it, it's crazy. Uh, my parents always told me something. They always told me, and my brothers and sisters. Yeah, you can fight your brothers and sisters. You can call them names or whatever, but you better not let someone else put their hands on your brothers and sisters, and you better not let them speak ill. I bring that up to slide into this next scene, just to segue into this one clip. And y'all tell me the difference between Viserys and Damon. The Iron Throne has already spurned Viserys, and it's for good reason, as you're going to see in these clips. But this is what solidified in my mind. Oh, Viserys is a fool. So just, just take a look. I corroborated this report with three separate witnesses. The evening was by all accounts. 
celebration. Ten years you've been king, and yet not once have you asked me to be your hand. Why would I do that? Because I'm your brother. In the blood of the dragon runs thick. Then why do you cut me so deep? I've never spoken the truth. I see I've been right for what he is. I'm wavering and loyal. A cut. cut. Now, you, you see right there the series called Otto a faithful and loyal servant. Like, no, he's a he's exactly what Damon called him. A cunt. Not only that he's conniving and sneaky, but the series can't see it because Otto just dotes on him and, and gives him compliments and all this backhanded bullshit. But everything he's doing is everything he's advising the king to do is helping him and his allies. That's all it is doing. And Damon knows it. And that's why he knows where this shit is coming from. And it's a shame because the series doesn't corroborate it. He just trusts Otto's word and seizes on the moment. <clears throat> and this is the start. <clears throat> this is why the family is going to fall apart because the series isn't a good brother. He is not a good man. He is a fool. Foolish men are not good. Weak men are not good. It's not okay for you to be a weak loser. It's not okay. And the reason it's not okay is because you could be way more than that. And it's a crime, an ethical crime, for you to allow all that necessary potential to go to waste. It hurts you, it hurts your family, it hurts the world. Really, really, it does. And people think, oh, okay, I get it. They appear to be good because they're not threatening to you. Damon's threatening, so he appears to be bad. Even the viewers who have read the books and, and see from an outside perspective, view Damon as bad. But Damon never said this. Even in the book it says no one ever corroborated this but Sir Otto Hightower. And in the true telling, there are two tellings. Uh, there's the maester's telling and then there's the true telling. And in the true telling, it's like he might have said it in jest. He might have said it in a backhand way. He didn't say it to mean what was basically uh, insinuated and he might have he might have just said a poor brother finally got the son that he wanted and he was only the king for a day and that was taken as a slight instead of no one knows how he said it. no one knows what he said except for Otto and these three witnesses that he doesn't name that no one else knows that he, but the series instantly trust Otto's word and dismisses his brother as his heir okay now remember what Viseri said we're brothers why did you cut me so deep if the blood of the dragon runs so deep why did it cut me so deep okay let's see what happens right directly after you just insulted your brother and removed him as heir and basically dishonored him. Let's see what Damon does. There was never my brother's strongest trait. What? Being king. I will not have Driftmark beggared while our king idles himself with feasts and balls and tourneys. I will speak of my brother as I wish. You will not. I mean, come on, man. How can you dislike Damon? for sticking up for his brother even after his brother did what he did even after he stole the air because he stole the airship he's the king and he can do that but that's unprecedented that doesn't happen and it's funny because isn't this the same the same way that it's said about uh, the uncle uh, Magor Magor the cruel didn't he didn't he allude to uh, being happy about being the heir and then his brother had a son and all this? I, I feel like Otto, of course, is playing on Viserys naivety and Viserys self-importance and how he made he made that whole moment about himself. <laughs> and he was like, bruh, he wasn't insulting you and you weren't even there. You don't. You didn't investigate at all. You just let somebody tell you. you. You took hearsay. And since you're the law of the land, you condemned a man off of hearsay. You're a fool. That's foolish. That is foolish. And it, he just didn't... He didn't do his due diligence. Whereas, of course... 
Damon, you know, he's talking, my brother's an idiot. He's not a good king. He does basically what he's saying. He's not a good king. It was never his strong suit. He, he sucks. So Corliss thinks, oh, if he's talking like that in front of me, maybe I can talk like that about him in front of him. And I won't sit back while he idly by. He basically calling him a fool, a puppet king. That's basically what he's saying, an idiot. That's what he's calling him. And Damon's like, I'll speak about my brother the way I want to, but you won't. And the reason why that is significant is because that's what I was alluding to earlier. Like, that's how I was raised. No matter what is going on between you and your family, your family comes first. You don't put anyone before your family. And if you do, your family going to beat you up. <laughs> like, but that's not what, that's not what he does. He doesn't do the right thing. And this is the setup, of course, to the, I'm going to do, this is my before the time skip um, video, but I'm going to do another one on his later years and how the series, when he makes that move against Otto to take him away from his handship and then brings him back to appease his wife, he still hasn't learned. And it, I guess that's, you know, like the old adage says that, you know, um, a leopard doesn't change his spots. And it's like, yeah, he, he's, he's the emperor in new clothes. He's the guy that, he's the guy that can be manipulated. He's the guy that can really uh, have literal conspirators around him constantly and he not even know it. They, he doesn't get it. And his brother literally tells him. Damon tells him. Listen listen to what Damon says to him. A second son who stands to inherit nothing he doesn't seize for himself. Otto Hightower is a more honorable man than you could ever be. He doesn't protect you. I would. From what? Yourself. You're weak. You're serious. And the Celtic leeches knows it. They will play on you for their own ends. And listen to that. The hard truth. You're weak. You're a fool, and your council is preying on you for their own ends. He just goes for broke at this moment and tells, brother, listen to me. You don't got to like me, bro. You ain't got to like me, but I'm going to do my due diligence for this family. And, of course, the series takes it as an insult. He's very petty. He's, he's very much uh, a weak man. He can't be told the truth and not take it personally and not get offended. And, and sure sign of a weak individual, period. No! Me! Is this your king? Um, I don't know, I, I feel like when you really take your time to look and see what's going on, it's, it's Viserys' fault for being who he is, weak. And, of course, he was raised that way. Otto has been around. See, people don't understand, if you look at the books, Otto and Viserys are not the same age. Otto is, like, 15 years older than Viserys. But Otto has always had Viserys here since they were kids. And he's been driving a wedge between Viserys and Damon since they were kids. And it's like, he's too far gone at this point, Viserys, I mean, to really, to really take stock of you know what what's important to him um until it's too late the scene where he's losing his arm the scene where he's losing his arm is the saddest part about the series is right because he he's now becoming retrospective now how will i be remembered will i be remembered as a good king later of course what do they say of me and the history of I have to forge all good. I've suffered any great defeat. Some might call that good fortune. Yeah. How do you make a good song, does it? This every feast in hundred years. Five hundred. You have carried King Jaharis' legacy. And kept the realm strong. Is it not better to live in peace than to have song son after you are dead? Perhaps. There is a part of me which has been tested. I have accepted the crucible. I may have been forged a different way. Many that are tested. Many wish to have been spared. Another lord might assure me that I would rise like another conqueror given the chance. Your grace, that is all right. All right. As always. It is perhaps best not to know. 
and see there, there you have it right there uh, he says it's best not to know which isn't true a man can only measure himself by what he accomplishes not what he he feels he should accomplish and that's the problem with Viserys he has he he is a mad king too people but his madness manifests in something different his madness isn't overt violence his madness isn't uh overt piety to the point of being a cult-like figure i'm talking about you bail or the blessed <laughs> but no, what i'm going what i'm talking about with his his mental illness is delusions of grandeur delusions of grandeur he believes that the, and the, he probably has been fed this it's probably not uh necessarily deep rooted in his psychology his psychology but i believe that he has been fed these notions by Sir Otto since he was a boy that you are to be like Aegon the Conqueror and like he when he says other lords I, I instantly thought of Otto if Otto was his hand Otto would say my lord you, if you so wished you would rise like, and I can hear him saying that I can hear him saying it and there's a bit of bitterness and anger in uh, in the way that that the series says this the realization that I am a weak I am a weak man I am a fool and in this moment he needs his brother more than anything and it, it also illustrates you know Damon is still healthy strong still able to have children well I mean the series is too but the series is fat and he looks old old beyond his own years he is foolish and a horrible king he didn't even fight for his kingdom not once did he have he didn't stop the stuff in the step stones not once did he assemble an army to do anything even that display with the gold cloaks was just a show it wasn't to be taken seriously can't hunt so he's not a real hunter he's not a real fighter he he was groomed to be weak and he is that's exactly what he is he's weak um which was the point i really wanted to make with this video about uh king Viserys. first up his name <laughs> i feel like he is he should be named the weak Viserys the weak Viserys the fool the series the appeaser and that's what his legacy should be and yes i'm being mad harsh but i don't care because i don't like this dude so uh yeah but i think that's gonna be all for the day um i hope you guys enjoyed my rant on this horrible king king the series and i hope you guys also um like subscribe turn on your notifications um, comment uh, we need some social engagement give me some feedback give me characters you would like me to do in the coming weeks um, I'm going to just keep on rolling these things out and seeing how it goes so um, yeah that's all that I have for you guys and I hope you enjoy it and yeah that's it Man, they gonna make me jump out my character.